In this presentation, we'll record a transaction related to sales tax. In other words, we've been collecting sales tax on those sales where collection is applicable. Now we're going to be paying the sales tax to the relevant agency. Let's get started with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars files. We're currently in the Vendor and Purchases section. I'm going to go on up to the uh, Customer and Sales section. You'll recall in prior presentations that we had set up the sales tax. So when we when we think about sales tax, there's kind of two processes for it. One, we need to think about what when we need to collect sales tax, and we need to set up the sales tax, which we have done in prior presentations. As we have set up the customers, we set up the sales tax. Then when we made sales we had to charge sales tax when applicable, particularly when we have the invoice. Let's go ahead and open up an invoice and say if I have a new invoice. Now remember in the United States, sales tax is not a federal tax, but a state tax. So it's gonna be something that's gonna be a state or local, you know, anything other than the Fed, you know, could, could tax you on it, right? So it could be state or local. That means it's gonna change from place to place in terms of the rate for the sales tax. So you're going to have to make sure that you got the right rate and when it's going to be applicable. Normally in the United States, it's going to be applicable not on service items, but on inventory items. So if you sell inventory items, that's typically when you're going to have the sales tax. So for example, when we think if we just, I'm not going to record this, by the way, don't record this. But if I just open up and create an, an invoice, then you'll note that uh, we're, we're charging in this case the 550 but the sales tax then, if I was to charge the sales tax, is 9.5%. That's uh, the 52.25. So as we've seen in the past, what happens when we record this, we're going to collect the 602.25, including the sales tax. But we only record on the income statement 550. And the difference between the two goes into a payable account, the 52.25. Now that could be a little bit confusing to people because you might think, you know, why don't I charge revenue at 602.25? and then charge the tax as like an expense, sales tax expense. So the net would still be, the net effect on the income statement would be the, the 550. And we don't do that because really the, the idea here is that the sales tax is not something that's, that's gonna be part of the business expense. It's supposed to not be a business expense, it's a tax on the uh, customer. So it's, even though it's still the same thing, it's, again, economically, it's basically pretty much a business expense, right? But in any case, that's the idea, right? So when it's a tax on the customer, so it doesn't touch the income statement, really, it goes right to the liability. We just happen to have to collect the sales tax for, uh, for the government. It's kind of like the idea. So it doesn't go on the income statement. It's a payable account. So then you got to think about, well, when are we going to pay it? Now we're going to have this payable account of the 52 on there. That's going to depend on the agency that you have. So which agency are, are you are you dealing with and how much uh, how much sales tax do you have? Typically, if you make a lot of sales, then the, then the government wants their money sooner. Right? They're saying, hey, they're doing well. I want my money now. But if you have less sales, then they may give you more time. So you may only have to do like process your sales tax like once a year or something and pay it if you don't have that many sales. The more sales you have, you might have to do it quarterly. In other words, you might make sales all the way up through January, February, March, uh, you know, a fourth of the year, three months, and then you'd have to pay it probably before the end of April, right? And so for our practice problem, since we're only running two months, we're going to imagine a scenario that is, isn't, doesn't happen too often in the States, but it, it's, it's the same idea. We're going to say that, uh, that the sales tax is going to be monthly. So the month of January, we're going to be paying in February. Now, again, it's more likely that you're going to have to pay like quarterly or something like that but we're going to do it monthly here. So we're going to say the sales tax that we accumulated upwards in January is something we're going to have to pay in February. So how would we then look at that? Well, we can run a report for that. We can say, okay, let's close this back out. Let's uh, say no. And then we're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go down to our balance sheet reports. So let's go into the financial statements. Let's go open up the balance sheet. So we're going to open up the balance sheet. It's going to be for February. So February. So I'm going to say, okay. And then we're going to go down to the payable accounts where we have the sales tax. So there's the sales tax. So if I double click on the sales tax payable, th this is what has been accumulated upward. We're at uh, 4.1490 as of the end of February. If I, if I go to the options up top and I bring this on back uh, to January. So I'm going to say I'd like to include uh, January and then say OK. So now we've got January and February. So we're, we're owe 
but really we, we have to pay January's as of the end of February. So the sales tax that was collected in January adds up to this 234.40. That's what's due by the end of February. So that's what we're gonna write the check for. We're gonna write it for the 234.40. Uh, and then we're still accumulating up in, Feb in February, which we're gonna have to pay in March under our scenario. Again, note in practice, it's probably more likely that you have to pay quarterly. In other words, you do the same process, but you'd be accumulating upwards from January, February, and March, and then you'd have to pay it in, in April. So you have to pay that three quarters in, by April, possibly, that would be the system. But we're gonna pay January and February. Okay, so we're gonna write a check in essence for that 234.40 to the government. So we're gonna say, all right, government, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say that we're gonna write a check. So we're gonna go into the vendor section and let's go ahead and say, we're gonna say, write a check and we'll say it's a check. And uh, so we're gonna say that this is, I think we, we put it in here as the California tax collector. Again, that's a made up vendor, but whatever agency you have to pay the, the taxes to, depending on uh, where you are at, that's who you would, pay the taxes to then we're going to process this out i'm just going to put a, a random number up top and i'm going to put this as of the 29th and the amount that we're going to be paying is once again that uh what what, what was that 230 234 40 234 so there it is and there's the sales tax you might want a memo sales tax for January. And then I'm gonna say this is gonna come out of the checking account. So we wanna take that out of the checking account, not the cash on hand account. So that should be coming out of the checking account like that. And then the other side is gonna be going to the uh, sales tax payable. So that's correct. So what's gonna happen here? The, the cash account's gonna go down. The other side's gonna go to sales tax payable, which will decrease the amount of the sales tax payable, representing the fact that we don't owe as much of the sales tax payable at this point in time, only the amount that has accumulated upward for the month of February, because we will have paid off the month of January. So let's go ahead and save that, then close this out and check it out. So then we're gonna go back on over and uh, let's take a look at our our, our report here. Now this is what the, was the detailed report. I refreshed the detailed report and you can see our payment now for the 234.40, which matches of course the 234.40 that accumulated in January, which means that we're left with just the accumulation in uh, February. So if I close this back out then, if, and if I just go to the balance sheet report, balance sheet report, and we refresh the balance sheet report, we still have an amount due in the sales tax uh, payable account. We should, where did it go? There it is, I found it. But that's what is due in February and that accumulated up in February and we're gonna pay that in March. So that's the, the general uh, concept with relation to uh, the sales tax payable, no effect on the income statement for the making of the payment here. Really no, sales no effect on the income statement for the sales tax because like we say, it's gonna be assumed that it's paid by the customer and therefore we take it out and we put it on the on the balance sheet even as of the point of sale is typically the way it's supposed to work so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here